Hi all, thanks for joining. Today we're going to be going through our new features and improvements to our iGyro and Xero integrations. Uh, these features that we'll be discussing today form part of our financial clarity tool set for building businesses. And where we'll start today is we'll start in Xero and show you how to set up your cost of sale chartered accounts. And after that we'll move on to setting up your first iGyro to Xero sync. So the screen you can see here is just a Xero interface, which I'm sure you're pretty familiar with, just the, uh, just the, the desktop of Xero. Um, but what we're trying to achieve here, if I open this gyro window, and we'll go under admin and into cost center. We're trying to set up our cost of sale chart of accounts in Xero to match these cost centers we've got here in gyro. So these cost centers are also used when you're creating purchase orders and they're a way of tracking individual costs to individual jobs. So whenever we receive an invoice or a cost uh, for a job, that we record it against these cost centers and we can report accordingly on them. So all these are cost centers here that we use regularly for construction. And on this right hand side here, we've got the uh, GL account number. So this will be a mapping to what we're using in Xero. So Xero will have a, an account number in this example here of 3056. And we've done that just so that uh, well, Xero's default uh, prefix uh, for cost of sale accounts is three. So we've tried to map that nice and easily so that if we've got a, a 056, we put a three in front, it becomes 3056. Um, 080 becomes 3080. 480 becomes 3480. Alrighty, so we'll try and match those up. So we'll jump back into Xero. And your accountant or bookkeeper has probably got to the point here where you've got uh, a lot of other, um, a lot of accounts in your, your chart of accounts there. So if we go into accounting, look at chart of accounts. This is the current set of chart of accounts that we have. So we've already done some sort of an import here. We can see all of these accounts are here, but it looks like it was an old set and we just need to fix that up. All right, so we just need to make sure that we don't damage anything else that's there that your bookkeeper might have set up. So the best way to do that is to click on this export button here. And we'll save that file. So this is the file exported from Xero and it's giving us a full set of the chart of accounts. Um, so we can see here there's a lot of other accounts, not just our cost of sales. So this is everything that your accountant or bookkeeper has set up previously. And we scroll past the threes here, we'll see there's also all of these uh, chart of accounts, uh, all these GL accounts at the bottom here. So we don't want to delete those, we want to make sure that they stay in this file and we don't delete them. Alright, so I'm just going to clear out this set of uh, cost of construction accounts here. Let's select all of those. And the only reason why I'm deleting these is just because uh, this is imported from an old file. I think it might be missing some accounts. So I just want to delete them out and clear them. And it's pretty safe to do that because it is a, a fairly fresh account. There's not much data in this zero. So I'll delete these. And what we also have is an import file, which I'll make available to everyone. And this import file is just a, an export of our iGyro cost centers um, match to what Xero is expecting. So we can easily copy these and paste them into the existing file. Actually, I'll just select the top row there and shift click the bottom row. So now I can copy those. Come back into our export file and I'll paste them into here. All right, so it should have shifted everything down. I'll just double check it didn't overwrite these accounts underneath, which they're all still there. Perfect, all right, I'll save that. And now that 
that same file we can import into Xero. Alright, so we'll come back to this chart of accounts screen in Xero. And we'll click on the import button. Okay, so we're importing from a zero type file, so we'll select that option. And we don't have the account balances, so that's fine. And we'll just browse for the file here. So I'll just drag and drop the file directly onto that browse button so that I can import it. And we'll click import. Once you see this screen, we'll click on the confirm button. Right now we should see our full list, uh, our new chart of accounts all set up here. So you can see all the ones that we that already were in there and already had some transactions against them. They're still intact. So that's the process just to import or export and then import a new chart of accounts. So that's put all of our cost of sales for construction in here. And we'll progress from here and we'll show you now how to synchronize with iGyro. So the best place to do that is to open up the iGyro portal. So from the web portal, uh, once you're logged in, go to the admin panel and scroll down and click onto zero. Now once you're on this screen, the first thing you need to do is click on the Connect to Zero button. Alright, so what that'll do is it'll throw you out to a Zero screen where you authenticate for the first time. Now we've recently been accepted as a Zero partner, so previous to this uh, we've had a 30 minute connection limit. So if your synchronization took longer than 30 minutes, uh, it would time out and wouldn't be able to proceed. Um, also, whenever you're trying to synchronize after that 30 minutes, you'd have to jump back into the portal and reconnect that connection to Zero. So now that, um, that shortcoming's removed, we're a Zero partner. So we'll click, uh, sorry, select the right business here and click on Allow Access. Alright, so what you'll see here is now we're connected. Um, you'll know that just by reading, what's, uh, reading the details here. Uh, we've also got a disconnect button instead of the connect button. So just make sure you're connected to the right businesses here. So it's a good, uh, especially if you're an accountant or a bookkeeper that's got access to lots of clients, you'd really want to make sure at this point you're connected to the correct business. So this is your gyro name and this is the organization name in Xero. And this is the connection expires, so it's in a, a very far in the future date here, 2030. So that's what our um, uh, zero partner status has done for us there, just to give us that really long connection. All right, so we won't click on Start Sync yet. We just need to go through some of these settings here. So if we click on to the Settings button to start with. So what we've got here is just a Sync Start Date. So this is if you've been using Gyro previously, you might have a lot of transactions and invoices already in Gyro. You may have already got them into zero another way, either manually or imported them. Uh, so you'd like to choose this particular date and that's where you'd start importing from with this new synchronization. So if it's a new business and there's no transactions there, that date is not really relevant. All right, we look at these tick boxes here. So use job tracking and use cost center tracking. This is really at the heart of what we're doing to try and keep track of all the costs and how they associate to each cost center. 
Um, so job number is the most important here, so you want to make sure that all of your invoices are assigned to the correct job. Uh, the cost center, not quite as, as important as the job, um, but it does help us get meaningful reports at a later date based on these cost centers. So we'll leave both of those selected. All right, we'll move on to the gyro companies here. What this screen is showing us here is all of the business contacts from iGyro, and these will be imported into Zero once we do this first sync. Uh, so we have a look through this list. We can see uh, it shows us if these are active, uh, sorry, active companies, or if they've been archived, um, along with their ABN number here. So you might find some blank ABN numbers, so they're a bit of a flag for you to go through and make sure you fix up those ABN numbers. Uh, also, I've got some warnings here telling us that there's duplicate ABN numbers. There's a few of those floating around there. Now, if I scroll to the top, we can use this warnings uh, heading here. If we click on that, I'll click it a second time. And that should bring all the warnings up to the top, just so we can review those. Alright, so this is saying we've got two ABN numbers the same. So here we're seeing there's two CSR building companies, both with the same ABN number. Uh, so one is CSR Chiprock and one CSR Monia Roofing. So there might be a reason for that. Uh, perhaps they're two different business entities and possibly you need to record two uh, separate sets of bank details in zero for those. Uh, this one here looks like it might just be a duplicate company with slightly different names. So we might like to go and try and archive one of these. So if you've been assigning transactions or invoices to these businesses, uh, you need to make sure you work out which one is active, which one is it, before you archive one off. So in this case, we'll just archive this one. I'll bring those warnings back up again. All right, so we've archived that business. Here's a duplicate here for Integrity Franchising, but again, that's um, two separate business entities, even though it's got the same ABN number, just two separate bank accounts for those. Uh, this is a strange one. So we've got St. George and Westpac. Looks like they're sharing the same ABN number. So that's definitely something that needs to be reviewed and try and work out which is the correct ABN number for these and fix that up. All right, once you're happy with the, the details that you've got there, um, what we can do here is a, well, a match company with zero contacts button. So this button will interrogate the zero uh, contacts that you've got and try and work out if you've, got, if you've already got some in zero uh, and try and match them up with the gyro contacts. If I pull zero back up again and look at contacts, This business has very few contacts and no suppliers, so we're not going to find any matches here. So I'll just run that process anyway. Alright, so if there were matches, so some data entry had already been done in zero previously, you'd find in this zero column here, uh, there would be a match to uh, the zero contact. So there's none in this list. Right, we'll move on to the next tab, which is the zero contacts. So if there are any suppliers in zero, they will be listed here if they weren't already in gyro. Um, actually, I'll just shoot back to this tab again, just to let you know that this match with company or match companies with zero contacts, it's actually working on the ABN number. So it's using the ABN number from gyro, matching it to the ABN number in zero, and that's how it will match the two companies together. So that's why it's very important to try and make sure all your ABNs are right on that company. So this uh, zero contacts tab will bring our contacts from zero back into gyro that aren't already in there. And this iGyro cost centers tab uh, is a list of all the cost centers, uh, but it's how it maps through from the cost centers to the zero GL accounts. So if you click on here, there's actually a drop down, so you can change uh, how it's associated with the zero GL account. So you can select any one of these. 
Um, so for example, if you had a, a lot of cost centers but you only wanted to use one cost of sales account in Xero, you could do that here. Essentially, all of these cost centers should be mapped to that one single GL account in this right-hand column. So I've just noticed we're missing one. So this uh, GL account must have been missing from that import file. Um, so we'll go through and we'll just correct that manually in Xero. Add an account, that's uh, a direct cost. And it was 3010 that we're missing. Alright, I'll just save that. Now we go back to gyro here, we'll just refresh that, hopefully that'll match back up again now. Perfect. Alrighty, so that's all the settings we need to worry about um, prior to our very first sync. So you shouldn't need to worry about these. Once they're all set up, uh, it's just a matter of synchronizing gyro and zero. So we click back onto the zero tab here. And click on the start sync button. So straight away we'll just go into a, a queued fashion and you can hit uh, F5 on your keyboard just to refresh the screen or hit your browser's refresh button. So depending on the load on the server, uh, it can take a little bit to start and then we'll uh, have a look at this new log feature. Alright, so it's just kicked off, it's just started running now. Now this is a new feature that we've never had previously, is a log. So if there are any problems or warnings, we know about it in this log file here. If we click on that, that'll tell us where we're up to through the synchronization. Uh, so it's just connecting, it's uh, doing its first um, job tracking number sync, uh, starting the cost center syncing as well. And again, if we hit F5 on the keyboard or the browser refresh button, we can see that progressing through its processes. All right, and that's it. We can see at the bottom, we've got a zero sync complete. So every line item was a success. There's no problems. All right, so it also says success here back on the zero tab. So what we can have now, we have a success. Uh, we can have a warning. So that'll be a, an orange warning sticker that will sit there just to let you know you should look at the log file and work out what the problem is. So a warning might be as simple as something like a, a contact didn't sync for a particular reason. Maybe there was a, a duplicate or something that was, and it couldn't find a, a match in zero for. Um, so that warning will give you an indication that you should check the log file and it'll give you more specific details on what the problem might be. So to view the log, you just click on that view log link. Alright, so you can just run that sync whenever you're ready. So if you make changes in gyro or there's changes in zero in contacts, for example, uh, you can click on that start sync button and that will start a new synchronization. Alright, now if we open up zero now, we can see what this sync has done. So we go to the accounting menu and advanced. We'll have a look at our tracking categories to start with. Alright, so what we have here is a job number tracking category and a cost center tracking category. So these job numbers, uh, so there's not much detail here, there's, there's not many items in this job number tracking list. And that's because we don't have any invoices in Gyro at the moment that have been synchronized through. So as you get invoices come into Gyro and they're allocated to a job, those job numbers will automatically show up in zero in this job number tracking category.
Now the cost center should have been populated. So we have a look at that. We'll see all of our cost center numbers in here. All right, so that's uh, the two tracking categories that we're using. Now we can also take a look at our contacts. So all of our contacts are in here. They're not in the suppliers at the moment because they only become suppliers once they've given you an accounts payable invoice. Uh, but they all exist in here. All right, so these are linked with Gyro now. So you can make amendments to these and the, uh, the changes will synchronize through. Um, so you can modify the contact in Gyro and that change will come through to zero and vice versa. If we just uh, click on one of those contacts, you can see it's got this contact code here, which is a bunch of random characters, um, or a, an identifier is actually what it is. Um, and that is a good indication that that contact has come uh, from Gyro and it's linked up okay. So you don't really need to worry about that, it's just something behind the scenes in case you're interested. I don't think there were any invoices at all that have come through, just because we haven't got any in, in Gyro at the moment, so no. But uh, if there were any invoices in Accounts Payable module in Gyro, uh, they would come through as a draft. Alright, so that's our first sync done, uh, and that's the whole integration set up. Uh, so there's a little bit of homework to do at the start, just to make sure you've got everything in place. Uh, but if you follow those steps, uh, you'll connect up very easily. Uh, so from this point, we can run through uh, collecting an accounts payable invoice, uh, processing that, and synchronizing that back into Xero. All right, so if we open Gyro again now, uh, we'll go back to the home screen and into invoices. So when a, an invoice is emailed into Gyro, it'll come into this uh, not verified section here. So we've got two emails in here, and here's one for Dingo Earthworks. Uh, a large feature in our Gyro is actually capturing the details of these invoices. Um, I have had a look at this one previously, and it's been a, a scanned copy of an invoice, so it's not a proper electronic PDF invoice. So I haven't captured the details. Um, but I will go through and show you how to manually process one of these. So we've just selected the line. Right, here's another in, uh, email that's come directly from me. Um, so I click on that invoice, you can type the details in. So as we're typing, it pops up with your business contacts. So we'll select Bingo Earthworks and tab off that. And it's populated the ABN number for us. Now we can type in any details that this might have. So it doesn't look like there's any order number on there. Uh, but we can type the reference number in. 5. And we want the date on there as well. So there's no job number, no order number, no job number. So it makes it a little bit tricky to work out uh, what it belongs to. Um, but if we use this address that's typed in here, so if we type in, well, so just type in 17, it's popped up there, 17A Smith Street. So I'll select that one. And then it's after a cost center. So, your bookkeeper might not be familiar with your cost centers, so you might want to give them a list of what the cost centers are. But it will be much easier if you're using a purchase ordering system so that these invoices would have a purchase order on them and that's all you need to enter. You enter a purchase order and it will automatically find the job number and cost center based on that purchase order number. In this case, it's saying it's a clear block and remove spoils off site. So I assume that would be some sort of a site scrape. So I'll type that in. Uh, 
Alright, and what we do is a due date here. So I'll just save that for now. I just want to show you, if I hit verify data entry, it's actually popping up and saying that you haven't entered all the fields that are required. So a due date is one of those things. It actually doesn't have a due date on here either, I don't think. Today's all that same date in. Alright, so now if we verify that. Alright, so there's no project manager assigned to that job either, so I've got a warning about that. So I'll click OK. So normally what would happen is um, once that's verified, the project manager and estimator would show up in this list and it would automatically assign this invoice to them for approval. So because that wasn't assigned, we've got the warning and that hasn't happened. Uh, I'll just pop this window out. So normally when you're working in the invoicing module, you'd work on dual screens. So you can hit this pop out button and you can have this invoice screen sitting on one screen. So it's nice and large, easy to read. Uh, but underneath that, there's just a, an approval uh, approval workflow here, I guess. So at the moment, we've, we've verified that data entry, but it's gone nowhere else. So it needs to be approved by someone before it can be synchronized through to zero. Uh, so if we go back to the job, we just need to make sure we assign a project manager. So I'll assign the tender as the project manager. I'm assigning the estimator in this case as well. Go back to the invoicing module. I'll just click off that transaction there and click back on again. You can see now it's automatically worked out who that project manager is, who the estimator is. Uh, but because they weren't in place at the start when we verified this data, we do need to seek approval uh, from the project manager there. So I'll click that plus button type in the username there, click OK. And what that's done there is now assigned it to your tender uh, for approval on this. All right, so when your tender logs in, you'll have this waiting on approval section here. So I'm already logged in as your tender. And anything that's assigned to him will be showing in this list. So if I click on that approve button, So keep in mind that um, you're also looking at this invoice while you're approving that. Uh, so we'll go in a little bit later, we'll show you how to do all this with purchase orders and you can see the purchase order matched up against this invoice as well. All right, so once it's approved and hit refresh, it, it will no longer show in that list. Now, uh, if we go to the file menu, there's a zero sync option. So we can do this from the gyro portal like we did previously, but we can also use this uh, menu item here. And it'll pop up here. So again, because we're a zero partner now, um, there's not really much of a need to connect back through to this portal to connect up that connection with zero. Uh, it should be a fairly permanent connection. So all we should need to do is click on the start sync button. We'll just wait for a period of time for that to synchronize. Um, but when you do this, you don't need to wait for it. You can just click OK and go about um, doing the rest of your work and just know that it's synchronizing in the background. So you don't need to refresh this one. Uh, it'll just refresh on its own. success. So I'll click OK on there 
And let's go and jump into zero. I'll just refresh this screen here. And we can see uh, it's turned up in the all tab as well as the draft. So it is actually a draft invoice. All right, so we can see that record here, uh, Dingo Workworks is the company. Um, and also note here that it's synchronized through the attachment. So if we click on that attachment, we can view that invoice. So that's available in Gyro, but it's also available in Xero now as well. well let's just click onto that record. Right, so obviously there's a draft, so you will need to approve it at some point. Um, but all the details have come through. It's assigned to the job number tracking category. Uh, it's assigned to the right cost center. Um, and we've also got that PDF document sitting there. So you will also note uh, there's a go to iGyro button here. So if we click on that button, pops up another window and it gives you uh, the details of, um, of the cost center and that invoice in the gyro environment. All right, that's the synchronization there. That was pretty painless. So you can do any number of uh, transactions there. So you don't need to just do one and then synchronize. Um, you can do a, a day's worth of work and then synchronize at the end if that's how you'd like to run it. Now we go back to accounting and then to advanced. And we'll look at our tracking categories again. We'll show you here that these tracking options here have come through. So this is the job that we just created the invoice for and it's automatically synchronized into zero. Right, I'll pop back over to a demo account now so we can see what will happen when we retrieve uh, invoices in bulk uh, through the invoicing module. So to start with, I'll jump into a demo zero account. We'll go to bills to pay and we'll just sit in that draft folder there. So that's when we synchronize iGyro with zero, this is where all the invoices will come into, into this draft section here. Here's a demo account of iGyro. I've just got a job here that we'll be working with. And it's important to note here that this job's already set up. It's already got uh, purchase orders already uh, created here. So an estimator has gone through and created these purchase orders. Um, so that's the, the purchase order records here. Uh, this is a full set. There's also some manual purchase orders in here as well. So they work in exactly the same way. If we look at the attachments tab under this purchase orders and supervisor folder, there's also a full set of these purchase orders in PDF format sitting in this attachment folder here. So it's, uh, the, it's the best way to set up your job is have an estimator up front, create all of your purchase orders, have them sitting there. Uh, for your accounts team, it means there's purchase orders sitting there, but also all of the business contacts would be in place as well. So we'll go to the invoicing module. Uh, all of the new invoices will turn up in this not verified folder here. And I have about 70 odd invoices here. I'm just going to email those into the module. send that off. So it might take a while for those to be retrieved. Uh, as you know, email can take a period of time to get to where it's got to go to. Uh, but also these invoices need to be processed on the server as well. So normally you wouldn't be sitting there waiting for them to turn up. Uh, they would just happen in the background and arrive uh, and you'd process them when they do. So when you're in iGyro, uh, these emails won't turn up automatically. Just like Outlook does. So Outlook, you're sitting there, you'll see emails pop up. You'll need to either hit the refresh button to see new data as it comes in, or it's actually refreshing as well. When you click on another folder here, 
that's the same as hitting refresh. So we'll just wait a moment for these to start the process. So the data that's captured will rely on a few things. Uh, one of those is having purchase orders in place will make it a lot easier to allocate a job in a cost center. Uh, but also that your suppliers and trades are, are using those purchase order numbers and they're using electronic PDF copies. So a scanned PDF uh, won't be read anywhere near as well as a, a proper electronic copy. Won't be too much longer. Okay, they're starting to arrive now. So we've got four that have turned up. You can see it's capturing a lot of the data for you. So we'll hit the refresh again. We've got 13 in there now. 17. 22. So it won't take long and all of those will be processed. Alright, so we can see all the data that it's captured here. So we're just looking at this Reese invoice here. So it's captured the company for a start. So we've had huge improvements in the way that we're um, reading the company from these invoices. So there's a lot better chance of matching that and finding the data on them. It's matched a purchase order number, reference number, the document date, and the amounts. And based on this purchase order, it's allocated a job number and cost center. So if no order number is specified, or it's wrong, the job number and cost center will be blank and you'll just have to manually figure out where that goes. So you can see that if you're using purchase orders and your estimator setting those up, uh, that your account staff uh, won't need to spend time trying to look around and, and work out how to allocate these invoices. All right, so again, usually you would work in this invoicing module on two screens. So you'd pop out this invoice here, have that full screen on another screen. Uh, that way you can see the invoice um, in a large format, but also you can see uh, the details underneath here. So when an invoice comes in, you would verify the data entry. So this is the um, this is a process that your bookkeeper would do. So we'll click on that now. But it's warning us that we're missing a field here that's required before you can verify it. All right, so in this case, it's the, the due date that's missing. So we've got some enhancements coming up uh, in some future releases, which will really work on these due dates. So we can capture those at the moment, but an invoice like this one doesn't actually have a due date on it. So most of the times these suppliers, or, or yeah, most, most suppliers are probably also working on a system like an end of the month or, or 30 days end of month. So we'll work on getting that involved in Jiro as well. So in the meantime, we'll just manually type in a due date. So you can work that out for yourself. And we'll verify that one. All right, so what it's done here, it's verified the data entry. So we're happy that all the data matches the invoice. Okay, it's been assigned to Tim.demo account because he's the project manager. Uh, but because this has gone over the ordered amount, so this is the order that the estimator has worked out, it's flagged in red because the invoice is a lot higher uh, than that amount. Um, actually, I should say this particular invoice is under that amount, 442, but there's a combination of other invoices on that order number uh, that total over that figure. So that's what this little exclamation mark is telling us. Uh, we've gone through that in previous videos. I'm sure we'll recap again on that uh, in a future session. Uh, so that's the reason why it's gone to a manager for approval as well. 
So this will go to the other user accounts where they can approve them. In this case, we'll just approve both at the same time. And that's an approved invoice ready to sync into Xero. So we'll move on to the next one. So again, here's the ordered amount. This invoice is well under that amount. It is flagging for us that there are duplicate order numbers here. So this is a demo account. So there's probably lots of these duplicate order numbers floating around. But important for you to take note of in a live system. So I verify that one. This one doesn't require a management signature because it's underneath that ordered amount. So the project manager would just approve that one and that one will be ready to sync into zero next time it syncs. All right, so it's just a matter of working through each of these. Uh, we can turn on an option uh, so that if uh, this order matches the order number, I'm sorry, if this order matches the ordered amount, uh, they can automatically verify it for you. Uh, that's switched off at the moment until you get used to the system. So you can see just about all of this data has been captured for you. Right, we'll come to this one here. Uh, so it didn't capture anything on this one. Uh, so just looking at this invoice, it looks like it's probably a, a scanned document. And if we have a look at that text tab here, we can see there's no data to access. So this is the text extracted from the page. There's nothing there to read, so it can't actually uh, type that in for you. So you would have to manually type that in. So being a demo account, this company probably doesn't exist at the moment. No, it does. There we go. Bessie. So it does have an order number there. So you can see as I typed in that order number, it manually or automatically populated the job number and the cost center for us. Uh, should be a reference here, hopefully. 10036. So once you're happy with that data, oh sorry, missed the amount there, better type that in. So again, much easier, you've got this on a, a second screen that you can read. And we'll verify that one. All right, so this one's been marked in red once we hit that verify button. So it looks like it's just got a, a sent rounding here, so that's pretty easy just to ignore. All right, so when we refresh that, all of these guys that we've already approved will disappear out of this list. So we've got about 70 left in this list to verify. So we can see it's gone through and processed all of those PDFs that we've emailed into the system. So there's a few blank holes that we can see along the way, so you'll need to manually fill those out. So again, that's a scanned copy. Uh, something like this one mustn't have had an order number on it. Now you can see here there's an order number section, but they haven't supplied an order number. So in that case, that's fine. You don't need to have an order number. You can send it back to the supplier. So we could email and just say there's an invalid PO number. Or we could just manually process that. So in this case, we know the job number. So we'll just select the job and foundations. So well, it might be something to do with peers here. Peers and piles. 
Alright, so that's enough just to process that one. So we'll verify that as well. Alright, so there was no order number, so of course it's going to go over what the ordered value was. Although we can see that the uh, the cost center here, so there must have been an order in the system. Um, so I bet you if we type that in here, we'll tab out of that field. We'll save that now. It's actually located the order number and made all that go green for us. All right, so we'll approve that one. Alrighty, so hopefully you've got all this set up correctly. Uh, so you've set up your invoice rules, uh, you've got purchase orders in place, your uh, businesses are in place. A lot of the data entry is done for you. Alright, so we've processed a couple of those. So let's go into our demo account in the gyro portal. And we can synchronize that. Uh, we could also synchronize that just from the file menu here as well. So file, zero sync. Actually it's saying not connected for some reason. We'll jump back into the portal again. So we'll start that sync. And that's queuing. bit of a glitch there but you can see that this is queued in the desktop version now as well so we'll just wait for that to process all right it's just starting to run success okay so if we jump back to the gyro portal again this is where you can see the log of what's happened so we can see there's a, a success sync here we can view the log if we look through that we can see that there's five invoices here with five attachments uploaded all right we'll jump back into zero and refresh that draft tab and there are our five here. One, two, three, four, five. So all of those have their attachments attached here. And those attachments also show on this left-hand side. Now, once you're happy with those, I mean, they've already been signed off. So most of the time you'll just jump into here, tick the box and approve. That's something that we'll work on in future releases as well, is an option that you can send them directly uh, to a waiting for payment uh, as, uh, instead of going to the draft first. So once you get familiar with the system and you're happy with how it's working, we can switch that on. All right, I'll just do one more sync. That one's finished. Right, I just want to show you also, if we load that job up and we'll go to the management tab. Uh, those invoices that we've just approved in Zero have now come through here and we've got an actual cost recorded against this job. 
So this figure is used in our reporting for financial clarity and we'll be uh, releasing uh, more and more reports around this financial clarity very shortly. So I'll give you more of a breakdown per cost center and per job. But this is enough to use our standard reports that we already have in Gyro just to give you uh, profitability on a job by job basis. I'll just shoot back to the invoice module again. Now, something that I haven't shown you that is happening in the background here, which is important uh, that you do understand, uh, is when you pop this out, actually it doesn't need to be popped out, there's a show PA button there as well. Uh, it's just easier to see on a big screen. There's this show PO button here. So this is very useful, especially if you're trying to work out why an invoice might have gone over the ordered amount. So your project manager, your accounts team, anyone that's looking through this invoicing module can pull up the invoice side by side with the purchase order and try and work out where the discrepancies might be. So as you're flicking through these, that window will update. So again, another very good reason to be using purchase orders so that you can get this side by side view and match your purchase orders with your invoices. Uh, very, very handy to try and work out discrepancies. So that also works in this smaller view as well, but it is a lot harder to read. You can zoom in. Sorry, I was just trying to work out there why this was over. So we'd ordered $250 and this is coming at $275, which will probably account for the GST. Um, so it should be $275 including GST. I'm just looking at this invoice and, and this one says uh, this business is not registered for GST. So that would uh, be the reason why this is being flagged in red for us. So really that'd be up to your business then to try and work out what to do. So whether you just accept that and verify the data um, and approve it anyway, or send it back and say, I'm sorry, you've charged too much. You should only be charging $250. All right, that concludes our overview, but in the coming weeks, we'll go through uh, more of these features and in more detail uh, for some of the specific features there. Uh, so I'll open it up to some questions. All right, I'm, I'm back guys. I'm sorry about the, um, the blurry screen there. I just, uh, was broadcasting in a bit low quality. Um, I think our recording will have a lot higher quality, so I'll send that through a little bit later. Um, but if anyone has any questions, please let me know and I'll see if I can answer them. All right, looks like Craig had his hand up. I'll see if he has a question there. Hello, Craig. I've just unmuted you there. Did you okay, have a question? Yeah, mate. Um, I had all those um, cost centers put into my zero by Kirsty last year. Um, and I ended up, I just couldn't reconcile zero. So I ended up um, renumbering them all, like as in, so the job materials and all that was like job materials 460, sound and gravel 461, reinforcing 462. Will that still sync with iGyro? Yeah, that'll still sync. I mean, you'll need to make sure that it is in iGyro as well. So you need to have them, you need to set up a cost center, but you also need to have a matching GL account in Zero. Right. So is that going to be difficult to try and set up? Because it, when, when I printed out the, um, the master sheet, it was, well, some had three numbers, some had four numbers, up, and it just was really hard to try and fill my account. Like how to know to go through and sort it all out. So, right. I and I redid it all. I can send you a copy if you want. But um, yeah, I just want to make sure it will still work with iGyro because I haven't started that process yet. 
Yeah, no, it absolutely will still work. Um, but yeah, please do send it through and I can have a look for you and give you some pointers. But okay. essentially all you need to do is just make sure that you have a cost center, you have a GL account that matches it in zero. Probably the, the biggest trick you will have as well is that if you're engaging an external estimator in that they're using the same cost centers as well. Uh, probably Shane doing yesterday. Oh, um, me and Shane. Okay. So yeah, we'll need to review that um, because if you're changing the cost centers that say Shane, he's used to working with the same set of cost centers to uh, keep things efficient, uh, as, as efficient as he can. And if we change those cost centers for you as opposed to everyone else, then your jobs will be slower because he has to try and work to a new set of cost centers. Fair, fair call. All right. Yep. All right. Thanks, Craig. Um, anyone else with a question? Right, so we've got Diana there. Hello, Diana. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. That was all very informative, thank you. Um, I just I noticed you said about the management tab with the actual cost uh, component for the mm -hmm. jobs as we're processing the invoices through either to zero. So those actual job costs are going to sit in a management tab of the job. That's right, yes. Is that already happening? Uh, sorry, you're just cutting out a little bit there, but it is already happening. I'll, I'll see if I can share my screen again. I've just, I've just got a job that I've put some invoices through today and I can't see there's no cost showing. All right, sorry, Danny, you are very choppy there, but um, this is working. But what you'll find is that anything that goes into zero and it's still in the draft section, it's still not an actual cost. It hasn't been approved yet in zero. So once you approve it, after it's approved on your next sync, the costs will come through into these jobs. Okay, thank you. I haven't synced since I put them through. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, next time you sync, those actual costs will come through and they'll be available in the reporting. All right. So we do have- Thank you. Thanks, Diana. Yep. We do have uh, more reports that will be coming out soon. So at the moment, we've got our original set of reports that just show us the actual cost versus these other um, you know, costed orders checked and final ordered costs and show you the variances between those. Uh, but the upcoming reports will show it in more detail, uh, broken down by cost center. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks, Diana. All right, so I think that's um, everyone there, unless anyone has a, a last question. Craig still has his hand up. Did you, did you need anything else, Craig? No, no, no. No, that was, I accidentally did it earlier on, and then um, read your, you've answered my question. Ah, oh, perfect. Okay, I'm just, just scanning that um, cost, my cost centers now to send across to you. Good work. All right, I'll take a look. Right, All right, good. well. Thanks for joining everyone and we'll catch you all again next week.